Hello and good afternoon to the next panel of 23rd Tursak Rendezvous at Istanbul International Film Festival. The subject of our panel is monetization and product placement. We will discuss about film and TV uh, serial production, how to finance, how to monetize, how to find sponsorship and resources of uh, uh, money and how does uh, product placement takes place in uh, content monetization and uh, its laws and regulations in our country. Uh, at the end of the panel, we will have a YouTube and Zoom uh, Q&A, questions and answers. Uh, our guests in, in uh, our panel is TUSAC President Elif Dadevran, uh, 3P product uh, placement production, Mehmet Akif Albicholu, uh, Pact Business Development and Global Strategy, Dan McCart Simpson, and Myriad, the Business Development, Louis Wakefield. I uh, welcome them all again for this afternoon's next panel. So uh, let's just start by uh, Elif Dadebren. She uh, can introduce the panel and our guests. Okay, thank you very much. Um, actually, the reason uh, we decided to do such a panel as Tursak because we believe that the most important thing for the uh, sustainable film production is, of course, the finances. And I believe that the world is changing now, and the conventional methods of uh, monetizing or liquidation or whatever we call it today is changing a little bit. Uh, so many years ago, uh, I am the founder of netbull.com, which is the first dot-com company of Turkey. And it was 1998 when we founded it. Uh, I, nobody was talking about internet then, nobody knew about it, at least in Turkey and Europe. Uh, and I was trying to tell that internet is the future of communication, but not only communication, but also content. Because as an ex-journalist, uh, I was editor-in-chief of Cosmopolitan and uh, one of the biggest newspapers, Suriyet, supplement Kelebek. So uh, I was trying to tell people that uh, the news, the media, the films, the content, which we call today, will be on internet in a very short period of time and nobody was understanding it then, of course. And uh, it was not about only Turkey, of course, it was all around the uh, panels and the, uh, the um, festivals or uh, foundations or meetings wherever in the world, except United States I was attending. I was trying to tell about the next generation of communications and content and everybody was thinking that I'm a little bit crazy. Then it happened. And again, um, we sold our company in two years, uh, comparing it for a very high price for Turkey. And then I, I started my own production company. I started filmmaking. Uh, at the same time, I started telling people around 2006 that the next generation of monetizing uh, entertainment content will lie on product placement. Again, many of the people didn't get it also because uh, I was telling them that, okay, you were uh, reacting me the same way that you are reacting right now by saying, are you crazy? And if it will happen, it will happen in a very long period of time. And I told them that Internet happened very quickly, very, very, very quickly, because there is a clock working different on the internet lifestyle, I may say. So uh, the thing I was trying to tell people that uh, after a while later, we will start uh, not watching the conventional commercials. Of course, we will have to while we, are, we will be watching the television TV serials or uh, the films on television, I mean, the conventional televisions will still be on the markets, of course, for the conventional 
uh, advertisement sellers. But on the other hand, after a while later, uh, the, um, the uh, mediums that we are using like computers, iPads, uh, smartphones, those kind of things will be only the uh, tool uh, which will help us to communicate, uh, to connect to the world of entertainment, like now. So the only thing is, the only thing matters is the screen that we are using. It doesn't matter what screen. So it matters what we are watching. And we have all the tools right now to skip everything, including the TV commercials, the conventional television, uh, serious things and everything. So today is the day that the future of advertisement lies inside content. And uh, there are so many things. Actually, I wanted to invite uh, some people who work on product placement by the uh, neuroscience uh, or you know, the, the, the ability of brains consuming the content in the uh, entertainment content, I mean. Uh, I guess I couldn't rephrase uh, phrase it, but I will try to, don't worry. Uh, I mean, while we, were, we watch the film, uh, let's more talk about films right now. It's easier to uh, make, give examples. When we watch films, of course, we want to see the film in a way that will disconnect us, our lives, and will connect to what we are watching. Because as a producer, when my friends ask me, why did you like this film or what do you expect from this film or why didn't you like this film? I tell them that this is my business to produce. So it means that if I believe what I see without thinking, okay, there's this mic, the production mistakes, the bad actings, then this is a good film because I really am connecting with the film. So this is the same with the uh, content we call as product placement. The product placement is supposed to be in the content in a very clever way that your sub brain shouldn't reject it. Because all, uh, Mr. Joshko would tell it better, I, I believe, but all the uh, researches tells that uh, if you realize that this product or this uh, advertisement product placement is there, because they are trying to put the brand into your brain, if you realize this, then you reject it because you think that it's between you and the thing that you are watching. So this is supposed to be done in a very scientific way, in a very clever way. And the main thing is branded entertainment is much more important than ever today and will be much more important than today, tomorrow. So um, the main reason is to put this panel is to make people understand what will happen next. And this next is so close. Uh, now I wanna uh, stop talking and in my next uh, turn, then I will answer some more things that I'm thinking about. If it's okay with Mr. Joshko. Muted. I did the same. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for uh, just introducing and the, the, your thoughts about the subject and the the thing that you said about how advertisers are looking about because they are the ones who are paying producers for advertising. So they pay the money, and what they are looking for is the is a solid uh, reflection of their advertising in the, the the consumer's mind. So advertising is like in in digital. It's always disruptive. It goes uh, between or in front of the content and. Uh, it's just uh, wants to be skipped but product placement is a natural way that it uh, all uh, also uh, modifies the the brand kpis like brand awareness and purchase intent for advertisers and 
that's why uh, the content advertising is going to more product placement. And maybe uh, Luis from Myriad can explain better how, how because Myriad is the pioneer in, in ad technology, how to monetize the, the content in, in, in uh, digital. So Luis. Please. Sure. I mean, first of all, I'd like to say it, it's a great setup for me. Um, so I, I'd like to uh, echo uh, her beliefs. We very much share her beliefs and views on the industry. And I think it works in two ways. Uh, I think it uh, it's right in how both content is funded. That's increasingly how we're going to see product placement and what we do, which I'll get into later, uh, becoming part of the deficit financing of content and also how it's consumed. I think in the way that the content's consumed, like she said, skippable ads are no longer going to be part of the future, nor a financially viable part of the future, because to reach the impressions that you need, it's going to need to be in content. Um, our, what we do is uh, we digitally put product placement into content after production. So uh, we're a VFX company that uh, use our technology to put, con uh, put the product placement digitally into the content. Uh, we, use, we want to be basically, uh, to tie into Elif's vision, the sophisticated way to do it and the kind of the universal um, best way to do it. I think our stats uh, speak for themselves. Uh, we, you know, 90% of viewers like to consume the advertising through the way that we provide it. Uh, 91% uh, in all our studies we've run by Toluna and Kantar, I uh, think it looks more natural uh, than, you know, traditional product placement because of the way we use our artificial intelligence to place the products. And also because of the, the we don't oversaturate, we let the producers make the creative decisions and where they'd be happy to have products or not. So the control is completely with them. And it's actually preferred um, by a factor of six to traditional product placement as well. So we think that obviously beyond the benefits of being able to do it digitally so that you can tailor it to different regions, deliver it dynamically as we do with some of our partners uh, like Tencent in China. And obviously the fact that you can re-monetize that content by rebranding it with different, um, with different products. We think that you know the stats obviously uh, show that the di doing it digitally is much more beneficial both financially and creatively for uh, producers. I, I, I will um, I will ask if we can just go to the video quickly uh, just to give an example because I know there's only so much I can talk about yeah. without boring people. So. Sure. So I've been looking at a company that's using computer vision and AI to put ads in the footage that we're already watching. Some examples of campaigns we've run in different yeah, countries yeah. with shows from how i met your mother in the us to you know more, more localized shows in our territories we operate in like france um i think that's probably quite a good example but i think just as a final point you know we believe that the way in which we do it is you know beneficial beyond you know all the other you know, factors you have, such as making sure the product placement is there before you start shooting the content. And being able to do it digitally gives you the opportunity to help producers with their timeframes and with raising further revenue. And that's what we're increasingly trying to do to work 
directly with our content partners as broadcasters, but now increasingly so as producers and especially in Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you, Louis. You, Louis. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's like, like when you're shooting the the production itself, you don't have to think about the product placements. You you you can focus on the content and the material uh, as good as it gets, and then afterwards. It can be added on by myriads of technology and it can be uh, streamed out in every platform. Uh, thank you, Louis. And I want to continue with Mrs. Down and its pact. Uh, what is, uh, like, how do you actually see the future of product placement and how uh, will it evolve in, in uh, packed markets? Well, I think, I mean, you've got to. And I'll just pick up on something Louis said actually first. Yeah. About, so in the UK, we have quite strict rules about product placement. So it's nowhere near anything that you would see in the US. And I think, you know, it, it's all about that, keep maintaining that editorial justification. And I think the digital side helps people to maintain that because it's easily stripped in and out. Um, but I also think that AI is going to play such an important part of the future. Yeah product placement so that it is more um you know better consumed and people are, are you can maybe even in the future think about that you could change those products depending on who's watching that it would actually appeal to those people individually so i think we can get very clever with the digital product placement side and i think that's you know that's not far off i think we're, we're already i know myriad's already doing a lot of the ai um side but i think for me i mean Product placement came in a decade ago in February. So we've got our 10th anniversary coming up. We fought really hard and I led the campaign to get product placement into, into TV in the UK. And before that, our government was, we don't want product placement. People would be brainwashed. And, you know, I come from an advertising background. So I knew the value of subliminal advertising and, and the impact that that can have. But I also know TV producers in the UK are you know they're some of the best producers in the world they wouldn't sacrifice the editorial side so i knew that hand in hand it would it would work really clever but you know something that elif was saying as well is that our audiences are changing we're consuming it very different we can jump and skip over advertising yeah. so i think this is where we can really have a win-win scenario where you know advertisers and producers can really come together and um, as we're losing, and I don't know how it is in Turkey, but, you know, the whole linear schedule is just pretty much non-existent. You know, we choose and schedule what we want to watch, where we watch, on, on what device we watch it on. Um, so working with a brand, particularly on the AFP side, so it's, it's you know, a full, fully inclusive. It's not just a product placement, but it's the whole branded content side. We can take it off the screens. So we've got loads of really good case studies in the UK where, you know, if people have created a program, the hardest thing now is that we've got to reach those consumers directly ourselves. We can't rely on a typical schedule for a TV for people to spot that program coming up. We have to reach out and reach those audiences ourselves. So having working with brands that really understand the outside, the outdoor marketing, the point of sales, you know, that we can actually work together by attracting audiences, but at the same time having that credibility and, and association within, within the two. So I think for us, yes, it's great. It fills that deficit finance gap. You know, we're losing lots of money from our broadcasters. So it's a real, it's, you know, it's a, a good way of, of, of propping that up. But I think creatively, it's actually opened our eyes to be almost marketeers because we're working with these brands that takes a lot of activity out of the screen. It's in shops, it's in shop windows, it's in you know, shopping centers, it's in a whole range of things, but it's tagged on promoting the program that it's attached to, which then drives audiences back to those screens. Um, so I think you know, it, it's much bigger than just product placement. I think you know, we, we've, we've got quite a healthy prop placement, which is free products that, that go in. So, our product placement struggled to sort of get started, I think. Um, but what it did do is encourage brands to just want to be part of the bigger picture. 
And I think that's where we see the real value is not just keeping the product and the brand on screen within our program, but it's how do we capitalize and take it off screen and act as a marketing resource that drives audiences back to whatever screen people are watching. Yeah, um, I think that's more comprehensive way of handling how product placement is evolving. Thank you. And uh, now I want to shift to local language for Mr. Akif. Hoş geldiniz diyelim tekrardan size. Sizde 3P ürün yerleştirme Türkiye'de uzun zamandır bu konularla ilgilendiğiniz için. Sizin bu konudaki yani yeni nesil yapımlarda ürün yerleştirme daha çok olacak mı? Dijitalde Bunun yansımaları nasıl ve hani e, sizin görüşünüz nedir? Bununla ilgili bilgi alabilirsek ben de İngilizceye çevireceğim sonrasında. E, konuşma bittikten sonra çevireceksiniz herhalde değil mi? Tabii. Zaman, tabii. Devam edelim. Buyur. Teşekkür ediyorum. Bu Elif Hanım'a da çok teşekkür ediyorum. E, son dakika şey yaptık ama e, kendisiyle olan ilk, ikinci sempozyumu, kendisi de katıldığı sempozyumu hatırladım. Şöyle özetleyeyim aslında sorunuzu. E, dokuz yıldır e, bu konuda odaklı ilk ajansız ve E, odaklı e, çalışmaya devam edildi. Şu anda e, tek ajansız e, Türkiye'de. E, rakamlarla bir e, aslında bu soruya bir, bir perspektif oluşturduk. Sonra dijital ve günümüze e, gelmek isterim. E, 2018 yılı e, itibariyle e, Türkiye'deki ürün yerleştirme e, 4 milyon dolar total tüm rakam. Yani bunun içinde sponsorluk gibi bazı aktif, e, farklı reklam türlerini de kapsıyor ama e, elimize geçmiş en iyi rakamdır. O yüzden ve en iyi olduğu rakamdır. 1 Nisan 2011 tarih itibariyle Türkiye'de ürün yerleştirme Avrupa Birliği uyum yasaları çerçevesinde yasal düzlemine kavuştu. O tarihten itibaren televizyon için bunu söylüyorum. Sinema bu rakamın içinde dahil değil. 4 milyon dolar. Ama dünyaya baktığımızda 2019 yılı PQ Media, dünyada ürün yerleştirme aksiyonlarını ölçümleyen E, bu dataları toplayan bir e, araştırma şirketi P- PQ Media'nın 2019 yılı rakamına göre dünyada ölçülen 20 ülkedeki total e, ürün yerleştirme ekonomisi 21 milyar dolar. Bunun 11.7 milyar doları Amerika Birleşik Devletleri. E, böyle baktığımızda şimdi e, şöyle bir e, fotoğraf e, var e, ortaya çıkıyor. Türkiye İçerik üretiminde dünyadaki e, önde gelen ülkelerden biri e, içerik üretimi anlamında. E, marka anlamında ve ticari anlamda da e, dizilerin ihracatını da göz önüne aldığımızda oldukça minimal bir katma değer ya, e, yarattığımız ve fayda sağladığımız açık görünüyor. Şu andaki Türkiye için söyleyebileceğimiz temel e, durum bu. E, genel olarak da şeyi e, dikkatimizi çekerse... E, Yani reklam türlerindeki e, reklam türlerinin değişmesi, izleyicilerin reklam kuşaklarından kaçmasıyla ilgili 2018'e rakamlarına göre tüketicilerin %54.3'ü reklamların %75'ine kaçtığı bilgisi var. Her bir bilgi, her done aslında ürün yerleştirmenin önemini ve ehemmiyetini ve büyümesi gerektiğini gösterirken e, neden peki Türkiye'de büyümediği 9 yılda bir ticari aksiyon alan bir ajans sahibi olarak da bunu şey yapıyorum. Temel problem Türkiye'deki televizyon kanallarının yayıncılık anlayışından kaynaklanıyor. Bu aslında hem sinemayı belirliyor hem de televizyon e, dizilerini ve dramalarını belirliyor. Dünyada kendi içeriklerini bulurlayan markalarını bulurlayan tek ülkeyiz. Yani kanal yani şey itibariyle. E böyle olduğu zaman e, e, Ürün yerleştirme bütçeleri, ben İngiltere'yi de bir dönem çok yakın takip ettim aslında İngiltere'deki ürün yerleştirme. Çünkü aramızda 12 gün fark var. E, onların resmi yasal süreci başlamasıyla bizim e, şeyimiz e, günlerle sayılı e, şey olarak başlangıcımız. E, sineması olan, e, televizyon draması, draması üreten, e, kendi içeriklerini üreten ülkelerin hiçbirinde bulurlama diye bir kültür yok. Bizde bulurlama olduğu için ürün yerleştirimi e, olması gerektiği noktaya gelemiyor maalesef. Şimdi şey sorunuza gelince çok da çevireceksiniz. Ben çok konuşmayayım. Sizi daha az yormak isterim. E, bağlamak isterim. Dijitale gel. Şimdi şey konuşuluyor. E, 
E, radyo televizyon üst kurulu biliyorsunuz dijital içeriklerde de müdahilliği var. Televizyon kanallarda da müdahilliği var. Yanlış bilinen bilgilerden biri şu. Radyo televizyon üst kurulu. Ben sadece kendi alanımızla ilgili kısmını söylüyorum. Ürün yerleştirme ile ilgili. Biz Elif Hanım da katılmıştı. İkinci Uluslararası Ürün Yerleştirme Sempozyonu düzenlemiştik. Kendilerine de katkıda bir hatta e, Rütük bütün üyeleriyle katıldı. İki yasa maddesi değiştirildi orada. Bir saatte dört marka sınırlaması kaldırıldı. Bir de sponsor olan markanın da görünmesinin önü açıldı. Yani radyo televizyon üst kurulu yanlış bir bilinen bir nokta vardır. Bir marka gördüğü zaman bunun cezasını kesiyor gibi bir algı var. Rütük'ün böyle bir mevzuatı, böyle bir işleyişi ve uygulaması yok. Tamamen televizyon kanallarının ticari inisiyatiflerinden kaynaklanıyor. Dijitale gelirsek şu anda bazı iki tane platform kuruluyor yayın hayatına geçmek üzere. Şöyle gözlemliyorum. Onlar da bunu tartışıyorlar. Televizyon yayındaki kültürü kendi dijital platformuna yansıtacaklar mı? Yani logoları kapatmayı düşünüyorlar. Ama bunu burada bir rütün logoyu, logoyu göstermeyin. Logoyu gösterdiğiniz noktada ben ceza kesilir diye bir mantığı yok. Bu Tamamen e, bu ticari kuruluşların inisiyatifinden kaynaklanıyor. Eğer bunları aşarsak, toparlarsam son cümle, eğer bunları aşarsak bu noktada Türkiye'nin aslında e, belki bir Hollywood gibi, çünkü e, dizi ihracatındaki 150'ye yakın ülkedeki boy göstermemiz, e, global markaların da Türkiye e, film endüstrisinde e, ve dizi endüstrisinde çalışmasında paralelinde beraberinde getireceğini düşünmekteyim. Ki zaman zaman Bizim Avrupa'daki partnerlerimiz de bu anlamda az da olsa yaptığımız işler oluyor. Çünkü Avrupa'nın bu anlamda ilgisi var. Çünkü bir dizide, Türkiye'de çalıştığı dizide 40 ülkede, 50 ülkede gösterilmesi onlar için de değer taşıyor. Teşekkür ediyorum. Umarım çok konuşmamışımdır. Unmute Cengiz, unmute. <gülüyor> Uh, I will now continue in English. Thank you for uh, Mr. Akif. Uh, he talked about his agency is the leading product placement agencies for nine years now, and they are one of the uh, main drivers of product placement in Turkey. And he, Mr. Akif mentioned about the situation, current situation, how is Turkish product placement industry is evolving. And it seems that at 2018, the product placement market is around 4 million US dollars. And in uh, it started at the 1st of April 2011, and in seven years, it reached up to 4 million US dollars. But in, in globe, how is it going? So when in, in 2019, at, uh, at a global level, when we look at product placement budgets, it's above 21 billion US dollars, and it's only... Uh, 11 per, uh, billion US dollars is only from US. Uh, US. So uh, we can say that in Turkey, there is a lot to achieve in terms of product placement. Uh, and uh, also Mr. Akif mentioned that why does product placement is evolving slowly in, in Turkish market? Uh, because there, there, there are a couple of barriers as, as our broadcaster culture and uh, TV culture especially uh, the, the regulations from Rütük, uh, the main regulator in Turkey, has some uh, potential regulations and fines as well. But uh, Mr. Raif mentioned that this is not as hard as it is, it seems to be. Uh, and Rütük is a little more uh, uh, in terms of when it comes to product placement, they can be a little more flexible. But still, uh, the main uh, big publishers are tend to blur, uh, blur the brand logo or blur the product itself when the broadcast is going on. So I think uh, Mr. Ak uh, agrees that with, if we solve these kind of cultural uh, barriers in our product placement uh, ecosystem, uh, with the digital uh, is being now the main driver of content, uh, Turkey can be as good as a Hollywood market in terms of uh, content because Turkey is a very uh, high content driven country and 
exporting its contents to most of the uh, countries, uh, the co continents like South Af America, even uh, even Australia now. Thank you. And uh, now I want to go back to Ms. Elif and uh, maybe Elif, you may add, uh, how do you see the, the product placement in Turkey after um, Mr. Akif's uh, like, uh, comments on it? Okay, thank you. Actually, um, I agree with Mr. Akif and since it's his main job, he knows better than me, of course. But, uh, you know, as again, as he mentioned, I was uh, the sponsor of the second uh, product placement conference, I may say, like uh, six years ago. So this is how much I believe in the system. So um, the thing is, uh, as you said, Mr. Joshkun, um, Turkey as a content provider is one of the biggest countries all around the world. Uh, we are not only producing, but we are able to sell it, fortunately. But the main problem is, uh, which we come to monetizing a more uh, a wide perspective than only product placement, we are not as good as producing, I may say. Because, you know, um, I was ha having a meeting before this with a government uh, advisor and he, he was asking me, uh, okay, we are producing that much of uh, TV series and selling them all around the world, but what about the incomes? Because, you know, when I, I checked the economical uh, uh, outcome of this, I, I'm not so satisfied. I said it's because for so many reasons, first of all, monetizing a content is different completely something else from producing a content this is something else it's it needs an, another way of approach another kind of thinking another kind of analyzing this is why we have advertisement companies or product placement companies like archives so the main idea is uh, the producers in turkey first of all they need to cooperate with those kind of companies. I know that there ain't a lot of companies like that, but the reason is again, why they are not, because uh, first of all, the big advertisement companies didn't believe in product placement for so many years. They thought that conventional will go on like that for so many years. And uh, in the whole budget of a brand, like, I mean, Coca-Cola spends $10 million in Turkey and only like three or, or, or maybe a hundred thousand is going for product placement. So it's not worth to work on developing a content with product placement. But now they re realize that it's not the case. The, uh, the brand owners or the advertisement companies are awaken a little earlier than the producers because producers are still didn't get the idea because the only thing they know is to produce and to sell it to a television channel or an international uh, bridge company who can sell for them to another television channels. Now, even platform uh, like Netflix, Amazon.com, those kind of platforms didn't, they, they are not able to tell the business model to our producers in Turkey. I'm not talking about product placement. Now I'm talking about monetizing the thing. Our Minister of uh, Culture and Tourism asked me at a meeting, why you are not against the platforms like your colleagues, like the other producers in Turkey? I said, because they see the platforms as a, a competitor uh, uh, it's not the word. Uh, rakip neydi? Um, Petition. Yes, competition. I said. I said the right word. I, I'm so sorry. I had COVID recently. Ah, oh, I, that's I, bad you know, news. I that's normal life, and there is this. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Foggy brain. Some words are losing in front of my eye. Black yeah. holes coming. <laughs> sorry for that. 
I was, so, uh, if I was trying yeah, it, can... it would be a lot worse. So <laughs> <laughs> you did? Did I also have? Yeah, I, I, I, I, I had it. But I, but I, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I had it in March, so I, I yeah. understand that feeling. It's oh, horrible. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, I'm glad that we both, you know, get rid of it. <laughs> Survived. <laughs> so um, the thing is, uh, if we are talking about monetizing, first of all, we have to believe that platforms are the forms of kind of another theater chain for us. We, we sell our productions to movie theaters or television channels and now to the platforms. And the best part with, the, with selling uh, to the platforms is uh, we can use the product placement issues more freely and uh, we, we have to uh, be much more creative for the new platforms. And this means that we can combine uh, the brands and the production all together um, much more creatively. So it's the new address for the branded entertainment actually. And the viewers of the platforms are not like the viewers of the con uh, conventional television channels or uh, the uh, movie theater goers. They, they realize that in order for them to get the good content, somebody has to pay it and if this is the advertisers, then they have to watch it. So they are not resisting it while they are watching the television channels because they believe that television channels or the uh, movie theaters supposed to bring the content as a fairy tale, even though it's a horror movie, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so the thing is, um, I believe that in Turkey, the platforms will change the perception of the producers against the product placement thing also. And the models will e evaluate very quickly. And I realize now that uh, most of the advertisement companies put product placement into their uh, prioritized uh, lists of uh, advertising also in Turkey. But the problem with Mr. Arkif's telling the blurring thing it's really un unacceptable for us, for producers, because you know, the main idea is to make people believe what they watch. And while they are watching, I am blurring many things, which I put people's brains that there is a brand there. Yeah. You know, and most of the time, believe it or not, the brands don't know that they are on those uh, films or TV series because we are shooting on the street and there's this busing, passing behind yeah. him with the Vodafone advertisement, for example, we have to blur that also. But, well, but the, the, they don't know how the brain works. The brain tries to catch what is under that blur and mostly they do. Yeah. So we are doing the advertisement for free, even though we are not you know, trying to put it in front of the uh, content. So that, this that was one of our main things when we were lobbying to get product placement in is that actually you point more attention when something's blurred out exactly. People focus more on that than if it was just naturally in the background or in that in that yeah <laughs> this is why i, I want to be my science yeah yeah so I was just going to say with that, the key is the brands are already there, you know, you can yeah. well, lobby yes. the government for it, they're already there, whether they like it or not, you can't avoid them anymore. So you might as well give the producer the benefit of getting paid for them, which is exactly what we can do with our reversioning. And you probably saw in our video, um, there were a couple of yeah. buses yeah. in there just to... And you know what? Yeah. The government can get the cash out of it by the taxes. Yes, they do. Don't try to get rid of it. Try to get the money out of it also. Yeah. That's supposed to be the main idea. Well, totally agreed about like the, the blurring thing is also something to do with the director because the director should that scene as is and they, they it's it's the art or some kind of they produce that content already and blurring it it's it's like modifying the content anyway. Like as the, the digital disrupts uh, the TV industry and the, the movie industry, uh, there are very new ways to, to add new monetization options uh, like, like Myriad. And uh, maybe Louis, you can tell us like how a Turkish producer can 
gain more money by, by while exporting their content. Let, let's say that I, I have this series and I sell it to Brazil, a TV channel on Brazil and an Argentina different ways. But so the, the, the two can have two different product placements for that specific market as well, right? They, they, they can get every penny. Yeah, the benefit of doing it digitally is that you don't have a physical product that you need on set when you film it. And so that can be changed digitally. So if you're showing it in Brazil, you can get, you know, re-monetize that content by putting a different brand in that would be applicable for the Brazilian market. And when it's in Turkey for its Turkish run, it can have a Turkish brand that would be relevant. Obviously, we're completely compliant with all local regulations uh, where we operate, but that is the added benefit for the producers. Yeah. yeah. And one more a very interesting targeting options. This can sound very futuristic, but this is uh, available via Myriad. Like if uh, as platforms know the, the gender, like if the viewer is male or female or age, mm-hmm. we can actually put the same scene with different products for different people. Like can women see the, the uh, woman shampoo while uh, this exact same uh, scene, the, a male viewer can see um, the male uh, shampoo, right? Exactly, yeah. So there's no limit to our technology on that front. Um, in fact, Forbes ran an article uh, on us saying, you know, you see, I think the headline was UC Pepsi, I see Coke, and then talking about how we <laughs> version it. So you can, you can find that article if you'd like. Um, yeah. There's no limit to what we can do on that front. It's us working with our partners. So we do this dynamically um, with Tencent in China. Um, but obviously uh, for, for that data and to be able to do it, um, we need to work with the distributor of the content alongside the producer as well. So it's... Um, so we need to to get that harmony for when we need to deliver it dynamically otherwise we do work directly with producers just for each time they re- redistribute their content thank you louise and I, sorry Ms. Elif. can i ask a question yes yes sure. yeah um i heard about the technology uh, like you know about the platforms because um Geographically, uh, your smart pads or phones can understand where you are. So yes. this new technology is being like that. For example, if you are in San Francisco, while you are entering a restaurant, for example, the restaurant is a restaurant, if it's a product placement uh, case, of course, gives its name, but the same TV it's film you are watching, if you are in Turkey, the restaurant name differs. Yes. It's something it's like a- that talking about yes that's that's true yeah. similar so we, we yeah there is no uh, there's no limit to our technology on that front and we can do it but because it's the distributor who's distributing that content to you we obviously need to work alongside them as well as the producers yeah, um, yeah. so uh, as our time is very uh, end of the, the session i just want to ask one more time to mrs down about like uh, how they want to evolve the, the turkish product placement and europe how do you co- compare these two and your well, comments I mean, after 1st of january we're not part of the, the european union anymore mm, yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, um, well, but, you know, I, don't, I never wanted to leave the, the European Union, but, you well, know, we are governed, particularly with product placement, as part of the ABMS directive, which is the European Union, and that has really strict requirements, and um, so we haven't really been able to capitalise and monetize product placement as much as we would like to. Um, I think our regulator, Ofcom, are too strict, particularly on the undue prominence. I think audiences will tell us if if they're finding it offensive, they'll stop watching and then we'll, we'll stop doing that. So I think, as I said in the very first bit, and I know it was maybe a little bit more futuristic, but I think the next part that product placement can play is very much down the artificial intelligence. And I think that's what we need to develop as well as thinking about how we can use the brand to direct audiences. So I think 
because I've worked in the product placement things for, for decades, and like Ellie, I was one of those on the stage telling people it was coming, telling people all, all these, you know, things that were coming down the line. So, and, and now I, I think, you know, I'm ahead of where product placement is. I think it's definitely down the AI. I think it's much more comprehensive and much more inclusive. Um, yeah. Product placement is, is a very spec of it all. Yeah, I think it's inevitable that product placement will be a big part of content monetization now and in the future. I think we uh, now are at the end of our session. Uh, Mr. Akif, sizin sorunuz var mıdır veya eklemek istediğiniz bir şey seansımızın sonundayız? Çok teşekkür ediyorum. Mirit'le beraber olunca merak ettim. Çünkü Mirit'in çalışmalarını 2000 11 yılından itibaren gözlemlerim Türkiye pazarında da şey yaptılar. Sadece o çalışmaları yani hangi pazarda daha anladığım kadarıyla biraz Çin'de çalışmaları şey olmuş. Onu sormak isterim yani hangi pazarda şu anda çok aktifler. Türkiye'de bir çalışma yapmak gibi bir şeyleri var mı? Tekrar bir düşünceleri var mı? Okay. Uh... Louis, we have a question for you from Mr. Akif. He is asking, like, what is the Miria's biggest market and how is China and uh, how do you see Turkey in future for Miria? Uh, so China is our biggest market. So we have uh, an exclusive relationship with Tencent there. Uh, for those, Tencent. Yeah. Yes. So for those people who are unfamiliar with Tencent, they're the sixth biggest company in the world by market cap. Um, and they operate the a kind of a fusion of the YouTube and Netflix equivalent in China. So they have both scripted content, uh, like a super premium content like Netflix. And then they have kind of, you know, less premium, more short form content, like you'd see day to day on YouTube. And we work with them uh, on both. So they're constantly clearing content for us, um, which we're constantly running campaigns on. Um, that would be our biggest market. The US would, uh, you know, closely probably be our second as uh, as it was in the question correctly. Um, and there we have relationships. I, you know, won't go into too many details, but we, we have a deal with Disney and we work with them on their 20th century studios uh, propositions. Uh, and we also have deals with uh, a lot of other smaller and larger producers like from Tastemade who do specified content uh, to Architectural Digest um, and the kind of Condé Nast brands uh, who are really great for the ABC One premium um, audiences that is, that's hard to get reach to, um, which obviously with what we do in content is, is beneficial to being able to reach those kind of super prime audiences. Okay, thank you. Oh, Louis. sorry, and final part, sorry. And I see Turkey as it, sorry, I actually forgot to mention <laughs> Turkey, I realized, which is a major part of the question. I see, yeah, we, the reason we're here is we see Turkey as, as a major expansion for us at the moment. And, um, you know, as, as you know, uh, and I've, I've said before, we're running, we, we've only come into the market recently, but we're running a lot of campaigns at the moment. And it looks like the market's really picking up and we'd like to really uh, start building relationships directly with producers in the market to help them essentially uh, be able to generate more revenue. Great, just... Uh, Translating in Turkish, Mr. Arif. Gerek yok, teşekkürler. Ben peki. Şu anda zaten son dakikalardayız ama seyircilerimizden de bu konuyla ilgili soru almak isteriz. Eğer bizimle sorularını paylaşabilirlerse, bizim ekibimiz sosyal medyadan paylaşacak. Ben de misafirlerimize ileteceğim. Eğer sorular gelirse bu şekilde ilerleyelim. So uh, I guess it's it's a, like an enlightening session about product placement, how it evolves. It seems that we have a lot to achieve in front of us, but uh, but technology and users are driving uh, the future. How will it be? Uh, so I can take your last words if if it's uh, okay with you. I can start with Mrs. Elif. Uh, actually, I'm so happy that you attended to this, all of you, uh, you. Webinar because, you know, the, I find it very, very important, uh, not only for Turkish producers, but uh, as a soft power, and we, we all need money, of course. Yeah. Uh, 
So this is supposed to be a, a, a very enlightening, as you said, Cengiz, uh, webinar. And I wish that uh, most of our friends as producers or advertisers will watch this and they, they will realize how important this is because Louis and Don were talking about the future, not only today. And Louis is already doing the future. <laughs> they are in future. Uh, so um, I guess there are so many things that we have to share with Lou, with Myriad and those kind of companies. Maybe uh, they can help us to improve ourselves a little bit more. And actually we are doing this festival, uh, Randy Istanbul Randy Film Festival, because of those reasons, we need to uh, share our ideas and relationships and co-partner in cases, not only producing films, but those kind of things also. So it's very valuable for us that you are here with us today. And thank you, Akif. And I'm so sorry again that I, I informed you that late. And thank you for making time for us. Ben, ben çok teşekkür ederim gerçekten. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Luis, your last comments on this subject. Uh, I, I think I uh, summed up what I wanted to say before, but yeah, we're really, we're looking forward to working directly with producers um, in Turkey. And if anyone would like to reach out to us and get in touch, then please do. You can find us. I will, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And Mrs. Down, and uh, what would you like to add up while we're closing? I, yeah, I'd just like to say that, you know, it's something, it, it can't be ignored you know, it's here to stay. I think we're going to work with brands more and more in the future. And I've just got a delivery at the door. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, do, you know, I, I think you can't, you just can't ignore um, what's happening and just embrace it and be as innovative as you possibly can working with brands. So, and, and thank you again for um, inviting me. So, teşekkür ederim. Thank you. Teşekkürler. Rica ederiz. Akif Bey, no, siz eklemek istediğiniz bir konu var mıdır? Ben e, bu değerli e, oturum ve çalışma içerisinde beni dahil ettiğiniz ve fırsat tanıdığınız için gerçekten çok teşekkür ediyorum. Ben de e, bu konuda e, yıllardır emek veren ve enerji harcayan bir insan olarak e, bu anlamda bir fırsat tanımanızdan dolayı müteşekkirim. Çok teşekkür ediyorum. Başta Elif Hanım olmak üzere size de. Sizi de ayrıca yordum. Emeklerinizi çok teşekkür ederim. Estağfurullah. Hiç sorun düşünmeyin için. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I thank you all for joining uh, for this session and I guess that's all for now. Uh, I wish everyone a nice Friday afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.